What's up guys, I'm Pause Build, and welcome back to our Ethical Zoo franchise series in Planet Zoo. In the previous video, we improved some of our guest amenities and we built a huge biodiverse wildlife area for the environment. And in this video, we're gonna start the Europe section of our zoo by creating a huge habitat that's gonna house a number of species as our zoo develops. Look at our adorable baby cheetah. I've just seen notification that they're about to mature and turn into an adult, so we'll have to release them into the wild because we can only have three adult cheetahs in the habitat. But um, look how beautiful they are. The cheetahs are just so majestic, aren't they? Look at that. So beautiful. But yeah, we need to keep an eye on this little scamp that's running away because when they become an adult, we need to release them. And we have a giant anteater that's, just, that's grown up as well that we haven't released. So we need to release this one because that's not good. Let's release her into the wild and now we should have good population sizes in here for all of our animals please say that they're just sleeping yes they are <laughs> uh you're kind of sleeping in a death pose i won't lie but you know that's fine as long as they're comfortable that's good that's all that matters isn't it and i've just seen our cheetahs now matured where are they um it was not this one we're not gonna be able to see that they're gonna look they're gonna look like the others now uh, let's click on the habitat and get the information from there because that's the easiest way. Right, animals. There they are. Oh, look at them in the mid run in the night. <laughs> uh, let's release them into the wild. 650 credits. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. It's because they're really good uh, genetically. Um, they must be really good. Yeah, wow, we've got some really good genes on this one. And, uh, and they're middle of the conservation status, so that's perfect. It gets us loads of credits. And it's nighttime, so that means it'll be sunrise. Yep, very soon. <laughs> and I think we should expand our zoo. I did think I wanted this to be European, a European section previously, but I think we'll have this side of the zoo be an Asia section that stretches around here. We've got our Africa section down here that will expand to include this area. And then I want to have more of a European section in this middle bit here. We'll make something else like this square area for the guests further in as well. So we want to expand out some paths. I'm just going to lay some paths now to kind of block out where I want this area to be. And then we can think about our habitats. Okay, we've just built a large square area and then we've got a winding path and another path here. And I think I'm gonna actually link these up together as well. So there's a bit of an, there's an easy access route for both sections, but I just don't want this to be too steep. I actually don't think this slope is too bad. Um, it gets a bit steep here. So that, that's maybe where we'd have a ramp. Okay, I like that a bit more. We've got like a, a very, we've got a slight ramp, then a bit of like a flat resting area here, and then another ramp, and then another resting area there. So that's not too steep for guests to get up. Um, and we've got a bit of an area here that we can turn into another uh, like wildlife area, perhaps at some point. And then we've got access to this higher level and then access to the main square here. And my plan is to put a large habitat to welcome guests into this area right here, and they can have a top view over here. Uh, we're going to need to put some railings on this, actually, <laughs> uh, which I'll do. But um, but they can get two views of the habitat, which I think would be really cool. I'm going to turn on railing on ground path, which is this option. And then we're able to add the railing along here uh, because this does turn into a slope um, at this point. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to have it on all of this area and then just continue the path along here with the railing. 
There we go. Now is a bit safer, so guests don't just hurl themselves off a cliff by accident. <laughs> We've got some more uh, solar panels failing. Um, some of them are just on too long a maintenance time, which is why. I'm going to drop them all down to three months where I see them. And in fact, it might be best to do this in the facilities tab. Uh, infrastructure, we should be able to see it on here. Um, oh, we can't see how often to maintain them but we can see which ones are breaking, which should be a good indication. This is the one we've just adjusted. Uh, six months, let's just move them all to three months. In fact, I'm just gonna go through the list and make sure all of them are on three months. There we go, we've got all of these on there. They're mostly in really good condition, but I think it wouldn't hurt us to just hire another mechanic to throw into the mix. And I'm gonna throw them into the Africa work zone. So we've got two mechanics on each one. I don't think that's too, too bad. There's not actually as many things to do around here. So I think perhaps we should we should maybe have them be... I'll tell you what, I'll move them onto the central hub instead. And then if we have more issues in the Africa section, we know that we need more, more mechanics over there. I'm also just going to keep training everyone up all the time because I think that's good. And I think while I'm on the topic, I missed the uh yeah staff perk on here so i'm gonna put probably staff healthcare in i would like to have all of these but you can only pick one so let's have staff healthcare on the, on this staff room and then i believe we did put something in in the other staff room in this building here yeah we put staff healthcare okay cool look at them chilling out just staring staring into the window <laughs> that's a good way to relax isn't it someone else is joining what are they gonna do you're going to come stare with them? Come on, it's the staring room. Uh. Yep, just stare into oblivion. The educators are probably a bit overworked, to be fair. <laughs> Maybe we should give them something that uh, makes their lives a bit easier. I think you guys had said that we didn't necessarily have enough educators. That could be the problem with the talks. Uh, so, yeah, they're all very high workload. They are all very poorly trained, though. But I'm thinking maybe we hire another educator, another two educators even, and then we put one on the Africa work zone and one on the central hub, and we just let them uh, kind of give a bit of resilience to the team. So now we've got this area kind of laid out, I would like to get the animals. So we've got the first animal is the European fallow deer that I want to have in this big habitat. And uh, these guys need up to, oh wow, okay, so it's one and 50, it's group size up to 16. So let's say we've got a group size of, of 10. I'm just trying to work out the barrier requirements. 10 adults and let's say uh, five babies. Or okay, if we move that up to 10, that would be basically a thousand meters squared. Grays two, taller than 1.25 meters. That's really short, that's the low fences, okay. Um, well, we we know that going forward. Let's see what the others are and then see what the uh, the maximum security and everything and area we need will be for this habitat. So other than them, we're going to want the red deer. And with the same settings, these are very similar, actually. Very similar requirements. So we just need to basically double. So to have both of them, we'd need 2,000 square meters. If we have the... Oh, they don't have the same group size. Okay, so that's only one. So that's nine. So let's reduce that down. Let's say we've got eight adults and eight babies. Basically, we can add another thousand square meters. Our third animal for this habitat is gonna be the Wysant, Wissant? I don't actually know how to pronounce that one. Wissant, maybe? Um, and they are in a similar group size. Let's say the 10 and 10 again. 9, 10, 9, 10. These have 2,000, right? So we're up to 4,000 meters squared we need. And these are grade three, but still only 1.25. I believe our red deer were only 1.5, oh, 1. these guys are at. So they're, they're jumpers. Okay, that's fine. And then the last animals for this habitat are going to be the wild boar. And these live in a massive group. Wow, I did not realize it was that big. Okay, okay. <laughs> interesting. Right, well, let's say we've got a group of 20 of them, I guess. You know, it's probably going to be higher, isn't it? But let's say we've got 20 adults and 20 babies. Oh, they don't need much space. So even if we did have 30, 
they uh, they live in a small group size. So we've got basically, again, it's grade three, but 1.25. So basically, as far as the barriers, we need grade three, 1.5 meters was the highest overall. And then overall for space, we need about a thousand meters for the boar, a thousand meters for the red deer, and then a thousand meters for the fallow deer, and 2000 meters for the whistle. So overall, that's 5,000 square meters we need to accommodate for. None of them need a water area particularly, like they don't want water enrichment or climbing enrichment. So I wouldn't expect them to need climbing enrichment. I think we have enough space heater. Uh, so I'm going to put in some null barriers to start. And then I'm going to make sure that these are in multiples of four because I want to uh, to put in some construction pieces, some four meter wide construction pieces to build in the fences. So I'm going to use 20 meters or other multiples of four just to make sure that it, it aligns how we want it for this habitat. Okay, we've just laid in the barriers. This is all underground here, so we can use this this uh, cliff edge as a wall for the habitat. But uh, now we should be able to put a door in as well. And I'm going to add one over here because I think this is where we're going to have the uh, the keeper hut on this side. Let's have a glass habitat gate because we've got lots of space over here. So I think we'll probably have the keeper hut over here somewhere, and then it's going to be nice and close. And I also think it would be a good idea for us to get some more staff buildings, like maybe another uh, quarantine and uh, like like we have over here. We could have another quarantine and trade center and another vet uh, for our for our zoo. I don't know if we need another research building. That's probably fine where it is. And for now, I'm just going to put the bones of that in. So I'm going to turn blueprints off and just go staff facilities. And here we are. We've got the basic buildings. I'm just going to put in these probably over here somewhere. I could even have a little path leading off to them. And I'm going to make this path eight meters wide so it aligns with our grid for the construction pieces. And we'll just put this in a different color so we know what it is. Let's just have this be gravel for now. And then our buildings can come off this. I'm also going to turn off the uh, the railing on ground path because we don't need that anymore. Now, some of these buildings have a negative impact on guests. So you can see if we get our quarantine building, that has a radius. I don't think our keeper hut does. Oh, it does. All of these do then. Okay. Um, including the animal trade center and the vet. I don't know why, because if I saw a vet, I wouldn't put me off. Um, I'd be like, oh, cool. We're actually looking after their animals. But... Hey ho, it is what it is. So we need to make sure that these are all the proper distance away from the uh, the actual main path. And that's probably easier done by putting the smaller buildings closer to the door because they have a smaller radius on them. Um, although this radius does also go down when you decorate them. So if we put them here now, I'm sure they'll be fine when we decorate them. Okay, there we go. You can see we've got them all in here now and they're, uh, they'll be functional at least. Now, if we go to the work zones, I'm going to create a new work zone and just add these in along with this habitat and call this for now. We'll just call this the European work zone or Europe. And we do need to get some stuff for this. So let's get another vet. Um, let's get another caretaker. And let's get another keeper. And we should probably have a bit more security in our park generally. We've got one on each section. So let's get another security guard. And we'll just assign all these new people to the work zones. Um, if you go into work zones, you can see all the un unassigned staff here. Let's just whack all of these on Europe. And then they're all assigned properly. Um, I'll also just make sure everyone's trained up by selecting everyone and just doing the, the train up button. Uh, but this is our new work zone. We've got everyone over here. Now, if we buy animals, they'll come here as well or the other one. And then we can move them into the, the relevant quarantine building and then into the habitats from there. Because this is getting to be quite a distance <laughs> for, our, for our guests to travel. I've also just noticed that this area is kind of skewed, which I don't really like. So I'm going to adjust this um, and just make sure that the uh, this square area is aligned. I don't mind what the path does because it comes off at this strange angle. Um, 
but I want them to be roughly in line uh, with these square areas to be in line. So I'm going to make some adjustments now so that, that kind of lines up better. Okay, I think that's a lot better, and now everything's nicely in line. <laughs> that was a very silly mistake, but it's resolved now at least. We just need to redo our barrier now as well. There we go. Everything's all in and looks much, much better. Now it's definitely time to get our animals. We've got, oh yeah, they, uh, we need to assign the, uh, the work zone to this habitat now as well. And that'll get rid of loads of the, uh, loads of the alerts. And then we need to get our first animals. So let's have a look for the European fallow deer. Now for these, it was 10, I believe, wasn't it? Oh no, it was up to 16, yes. Yeah. So we said if we had about 10, that'd be good. We should also check how old they can be. So they live until 15 for males and 18 for females. Wow, that's quite a difference, that's interesting. Um, and the, the males weigh double what the females do. I mean, I guess part of that's the horns, but they're, they're probably a lot more muscular. That's really interesting though. There's quite a disparity between them. Um, so they live to 15 to 18 and they can breed from four so that's that's definitely good information to know let's go and get some then with that in mind this one's five years old um it's got poor longevity which isn't ideal but we do need a herd this one's pretty let's let's do them by appeal and get the most appealing ones um i'm not tempted to go for leucistic ones i'm just gonna keep to the uh the normal markings Let's get, this one's only six. Let's adopt this female. Let's adopt this female. I'm also mindful to get them from Frontier Zoo if possible, or at least to, to have in mind that the ones from Frontier Zoo won't be related, whereas the other ones could be sold from the same zoo. So you don't want to get loads of those um, if, if you're planning on breeding with them. So this one I am still going to get because she's still pretty, pretty decent. It's just the longevity that's not that good. Her overall genetic uh, prowess isn't too bad. And let's refresh and see if we have any more. Yeah, let's get this female and this one. These are all very good. Happy with these. Um, the Only the immunity is pretty poor. Everything else is fine. We'll go for them. And then how many is that? We've got eight. So we've got eight at the minute. If we can refresh the list, I really would like a male, but at the minute we don't have any. Let's, uh, let's see if any crop up uh, as we're looking for our other animals. In the meantime, let's send these eight females to quarantine. So that will probably fill up our quarantine here and hit play. And they should move them from this building, uh, the Animal Trade Center, into the quarantine building that's right next door. And they're very conveniently located near the habitat we want. Now, at the minute, we can't put them in here or they'll just run off. <laughs> so let's actually build some barriers with the construction pieces and see what we have. I'm probably gonna put a fence in just because it's uh, 1.5 meters. It doesn't actually have to be that tall. So, oh, why are you running over there? There's a quarantine building right here. Oh, there's no power. Right, okay, that is a problem. Let's put in a solar panel that will deal with this area. Let's just put it here for now. Um, we'll have it like that, and then we can put a small staff path in. This is all definitely gonna be changed but this will work just for now. 
And now this quarantine building should work. That's perfect. I don't think we can stop this one from going over there, but that's fine. They'll just be moved in later. <laughs> that's a long way. Oh, well, it's done now. Now the rest of them will be moved properly from there to there. But there's only one caretaker, so it's going to take them a while to move everyone across. Now, let's start building the fence. Uh, everyone's coming this way now. Perfect. Okay, the others are going here. It's just one that then that went that way. That's fine. Okay, I think that's most of the habitat laid out. This is a pretty huge area. It's, yeah, okay, wow. So it's about three times the size that they need, but that's kind of what we want, you know, in the keeping with the ethical zoo. We're giving them three times the space that these guys actually need. Um, I'm gonna hit play. Um, we've got some of our deer have already passed quarantine and some of them are in here. A lot of them are in this one. They've kind of been split between them because I messed up the uh, <laughs> having it powered at the start. But the other animals will be absolutely fine to move across. Uh, when these have all passed quarantine, we'll move them all into the habitat and then we can see if there's any gaps or anything that we need to fix um, by checking if any of them can escape. Uh, this back corner is one that gives me a little bit of concern, but I'm sure it will be okay when we actually when we actually get to it. I just don't want them to be able to walk out at any point. And I like that, you know, we've, we've kept with the European theme. It just kind of looks like a farm fence, uh, which is quite cute. I quite like it. Okay, we'll just wait for them to pass quarantine now and then we can move them in. Okay, all eight have passed quarantine. We've got four of them in here. So let's move them into Habitat 33. We need to rename this habitat as well. And let's get our quarantine and grab all of these and move them into here as well. And as the sun rises on our zoo, we should have our first deer enter the, enter the habitat. Oh, I'm very excited. Wow, look at them. 
Oh, they're so pretty, aren't they? Got two of them now. And they're running. Let's see what this, this is like for them. Now, I'm going to pause quickly, go into the heat mats, click habitat. And then if we've got our animal selected, it'll tell us if they can break out anywhere. And I'm very pleased to see that they can't break out. So that's actually perfect for us. Um, we need to, we can let the rest of them enter the habitat. We need to buy our next animals And I think that the real test for this is going to be the red deer. So let's get them next uh, The red deer what were their group sizes? Let's remind ourselves They're three to nine. So we need one male and up to eight females So let's have a look at how many there are and again We've sorted them by appeal so the most appealing at the top and these guys live much longer than the others, 27 years each, and they weigh a lot more as well. Wow, okay, so 27 years, um, we can probably, I don't, I didn't think any of them here were that old, so let's have a look at that. Yeah, eight, nine, nine years old isn't very old for them, so let's, let's adopt this female, this female. Oh, there's a male here that looks quite decent. Um, we'll maybe circle back to him. Um, we've got this female looks great and this female uh, Let's have a refresh See what else we've got. I think that might be it I'm gonna grab this male because he seems pretty pretty decent for our needs and Then uh, there's no more. Okay. How many is that? That's four females and one male. I believe that meets the requirements Yeah, they needed a group of three minimum and we've got a group of five. So this is absolutely fine We can breed up to the other numbers um, let's also have another look for the male of the fallow deer. Because we would like to get a male in. Oh, there's a good male from Frontier Zoo here. Let's grab this one. And we can send all of these to quarantine. And they're actually going to go to this quarantine building this time, hopefully. <laughs> Because it's empty and they should. Look at them in here. Oh, it's adorable. It doesn't actually seem that bad for them. Like the terrain isn't too far off what they need. So they're actually not too unhappy considering. Oh, who can't... The habitat... The mechanic can't reach the habitat. Oh, we don't have a mechanic for this section. Of course. Right, let's just do a double check of our finances. I think we're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're very good, to be honest. Let's let's grab another mechanic for this area too. Um, we also need to set this solar panel, although it is going to be moved, it's just temporary. We're going to set it to maintain every three months. I'm going to quickly set our mechanic uh, to be for the Europe work zone. He can spin around. Let's just train up everyone again. Just want to make sure we have the, the most trained up staff we can. And then they can maintain. Oh, this this uh, is out of alignment. I don't like that. <laughs> That's much better. I much prefer that. Okay. Oh, no. I'm going to pause. We've got Quokka about to inbreed. Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh, dear. That means they've done it. No. Okay. Why are you inbreeding? Are you, are you like the... No, you're an unknown father. Is this the daughter then? Oh, that's annoying. Okay, we need, we want to release her into the wild, but she's pregnant, so we can't do that now. Um, look at them all in here. Look how many babies we have. Oh, all the all the wallabies and and oh, look at them. Got even more babies. Oh, I love this little habitat. They're so cute. Oh, and our emus are doing well. Got some uh, some young adults now as well. We need to go through a renaming session probably and go through the zoo and just make sure everyone's actually been named. So please, if you have any names for any of our animals so far, please do leave them in the comments or just general names you'd, you'd like to see on any animal. And also, we've got all the animals for this episode. Please do leave names in the comments for what, what you want for these because... Uh, we're going to have a lot of animals in here that need naming. <laughs> okay, it looks like everyone's past quarantine. So let's grab them from the quarantine building and move everyone in. And in fact, I'm going to move uh, Ivan, the fallow deer male, in first. So we've got him in there. We should probably add some food in for these guys as well. So I'm going to filter by the European fallow deer. And we can see they use these large food troughs. Let's add one of these in over here by the entrance there. Um, I do want to check out how shy they are actually as well. The European fallow deer. 
Uh, they're neutral. Okay, so they won't mind coming up to the to the fence and eating there. That's absolutely fine for them. Let's get one of those. I think maybe we should add a few food food troughs. I'm imagining most of them are going to eat from these. Let's put a couple by the fences like that. And then maybe I'll move them away very slightly so they can uh, they can stand around them on all sides. But uh, we, uh, we want to have them in good view for our guests, don't we? And we should probably also just in the meantime add in a small water pipe so that there is water in this habitat for them uh, because this is quite a big build and they might be in there for a little while there we go yes yeah. so they're already interested in having a little drink bless them um, we are going to probably build like a lake or something for these guys um so they'll drink from that normally but this is just uh while they uh while we're adding everyone in and slowly improving the habitat i think it's probably a good idea that they have they have something to drink and here comes our caretaker with our male. I'm very excited to see him. He should be massive. When they're like 160 kilos or something. That'll be very cool to see them. Wow, look at them. Yeah, they look great. Look at those horns. Yeah, see, everyone's happy. <laughs> those horns are dirt. You don't want to mess with those antlers, do you, at all? My goodness. Right, now we've got all of the European fallow deer in. I think it's maybe time we learn a little bit about these guys. European fallow deer have excellent eyesight and hearing, and they can detect very slight movements in their surroundings, which helps them to avoid predation. The fawns can start walking about 30 minutes after they're born, which I definitely couldn't do. The antlers of European fallow deer can be up to 60 centimeters long and are shed every year. And while the antlers of the European fallow deer are growing, they're covered in velvet. When growth is complete, the velvet shed and the antlers may temporarily have a tattered appearance. While a species of fallow deer was native to Europe before the last ice age, the European fallow deer is thought to be native to Turkey, Italy and Greece. It's suspected that the Romans spread this species throughout the continent during their rule. Nowadays, European fallow deer have been introduced to countries around the world. So they're not just European animals. Thankfully, the European fallow deer is not endangered. However, the last truly native populations of European fallow deer in Turkey are suffering a significant decline due to habitat loss and poaching. They're just so beautiful. I do love them in here. And I can see we've got some alerts. So souvenir profits. Wow, we've got two of these. Okay, cool. We've earned a yearly souvenir profit of 500. So we can claim that. That's a good amount. Is it? This is how much we get for them, I think. Wow. Oh, no, that's how much we have. This is how much we get. So we get 500. But, you know, that, that could be worse. <laughs> and get a zoo inspection report with an overall rating of five stars. That's amazing. That's such an achievement. We should... Oh, I don't think we can have a look. Ah, oh, because we've got an inspector arriving very soon. That's fine. Oh, no. Um, they're fighting for... Ah, oh, they're fighting for alpha status. Okay. That's a shame. Uh, there's not, not much we can do about that. If they do that multiple times then we can always release one into the wild but i'd rather not have to because they basically they should be fine to be together it's just where's the door i think it's over here there it is basically there'll be two females that are similar probably similar age um so they're they're battling for top top dog it, it's that that's what the fighting is but it should be fine hopefully that will settle the dispute and they won't fight again but we can see all of our red deer are ready to pass quarantine. I'm going to play because I don't want it to be nighttime when we release these guys. <laughs> Let's get all of our red deer. There's one, two, three, four, five of them. Let's move them into our habitat. Now, what are we going to call this? I think we should just name it Deer, Wissant, and Boar. There's going to be so many species of animal in here. I think that name just makes sense. Oh, and you can see the first one is coming in. The first red deer. Oh, look at them. They've got longer faces, I think. Oh, wow. Doing a bit of a run. It's harder to see in the dawn, but the sun is coming up. Look at them. Isn't that beautiful sunrise. And I'm hoping if we click on the habitat and we select this animal. Yes, these are the ones I was worried about. The resistance grade of construction pieces is like maximum, so they'll be fine to break. They won't be able to break through it. And also we can see that they can't jump the fences or it would it would have a uh, jumpable escape point icon somewhere. So all of them are happily housed within this habitat. 
And we've got our mail in here as well. Wow. Look at those. There's some proper antlers there. Oh. They're very cool. Oh, they're just feeding everyone. Oh, that's adorable. And we've got both species here. Now, the reason I've put them in is because they should benefit. If we go to the Zoopedia, um, if we go to Interspecies Enrichment, you can see that they, they benefit from sharing sharing environments with each other. So they've, uh, they're, they're happy for to be together. I think they all have the same benefits. If I click through, yeah, they all like being with the four. And actually we really could consider having the mute swan in the habitat too. It seems like the, the five of them get on really well. So I think maybe there'll be a fifth addition, a, a late addition to the group. Cause we haven't got them in yet. And look, they're all eating. I love it. They're eating near the, the guests can see them. Like this is perfect. We've got an education one as well. We, the green iguana education rating to 5%. We've got 6%. Now there's definitely room for improvement there, but that is something. Um, we should probably check in on our vet research because this is where most of it comes from. And we can see we're getting through it. The cheetah is done. We've got spotted hyena and aardvark. Now the aardvark is almost done. Let's move through. I think the black rhinoceros is the next animal to be researching. And the, oh no, no, we've got the striped hyena. Okay, so let's get this vet on the striped hyena. I think this will be fine. Let's add them in for the black rhinoceros too. I'll tell you what we'll do as well is we'll put the work, we'll edit the work zone. We need a staff room over here too that we're missing currently. Let's add in all of this for Europe and then also add in the staff room here and the research building over here. And then that should be good enough, uh, just in case they need to go over there. But we do need to put a staff room over here too. And we could just put all of this into one building if we just add it on here. So I'm gonna turn the blueprints off and put a small staff room in uh, for your staff facilities. I'll tell you what, let's have a large staff room again because it's not that much, like it's still not that much money. We've got plenty of money. If we add it to this group, where is a good location? maybe over here and now we've got a staff building in there as well and we can add this into the work zone too and then they should have plenty of space uh over here cool we've got them in we're gonna have a lot more staff around here is what i'm thinking so a big staff room is probably a good idea look at our deer all together though and the point is they all benefit from being with each other you can see they get a 20 percent bonus from just being with each other um, however, we do need to keep adding our animals into here because I'd like... To oh, look, they just put food. They're all running. <laughs> I think what we'll do is we'll edit the terrain up to be what these guys need. And then we can just make small adjustments when the other animals come in too. Because I can't imagine they require that different uh, terrain. And it seems like this is basically okay anyway they just need a bit more short grass instead of long grass so if you click on the terrain distribution it automatically brings up the editor and i'm just going to go short grass and blend in some short grass and taking it away from the long grass okay i've just kind of blended it in there a bit so we've got more long grass near the back and more short grass near the front of the habitat and that seems to be meeting the needs of what is this the european fallow deer so let's have a look at the red deer are they happy they are happy okay cool it's in a good level for them as well so that's pretty good i'm quite happy with that generally and see we've already met their need for terrain um, so all we need is their enrichment and the a hard shelter ideally and then we can add in some plants and they're happy with as they have it now or a hundred percent they're really not fussy which is actually kind of perfect um, to have them start off this habitat. Let's see how, what the red deer think as well. They're also exactly the same. They're really relaxed animals. So that's really cool. Oh my goodness. Our, our baby black rhinos have been born. <gasps> wow, look at them. Oh, they're so cute. Look at their little face. Oh, you can see where their horns are going to come in. Oh, they're adorable. Oh, we definitely need more names for this zoo because we need to rename this little bubba too. Oh, such a cute little one in the flowers. Wow, this game is so beautiful, I have to say. It's moments like this where I really appreciate the, the graphics in the game. 
because that looks incredible. Well, we'll go back to the habitat we're building, though. We won't get distracted. <laughs> oh, I need to reset this. Just as I say, I'm not going to get distracted. <laughs> this I can't have this be uh, short grass around here, where I made a bit of an error earlier. There you go. It's like that never happened earlier. <laughs> now, the next improvement I want to make to the habitat is to put in some hard shelter. So let's do that now. And I think I'm going to build these with the construction pieces rather than use the shelters in the habitat tab. Um, I'm going to build them kind of custom. And I wonder whether we should use the same stone pieces that we have for the walls or whether it's a bit too much stone. I think it might be a bit much. The alternative is we could have the new world wood because our building over here is going to be new world and that would probably tie in reasonably well. Um, we could even have a building that's part stone, part wood with the new world. That might be better. In fact, I think that's what we're going to do. So we're going to build probably a couple of little houses and some even smaller shelter areas just with the stone pieces and these new world wood pieces just to make some simple structures that um, can give them a little bit of shelter um, if it starts to rain.
Okay, we put in quite a lot of shelter for these guys now in kind of like a farmyard style, which I still quite like to go with this theme. Um, but that should more than meet their hard shelter requirements. And some of it's at different levels because we're going to have different animals in here. I wanted to give some different types. So this is a bit more like cozy. Um, like this is far more open. We've got that kind of semi open here. And then we've got the big barn structure. And I think it's tall enough for all of them, for all of the shelters. Uh, but some of them are a bit lower, like these are quite low. So it may be that just some of the animals come in here. And that's absolutely fine, because as long as there's space for all of them, um, everything's fine. Oh, I did miss putting some bedding in. That's a key thing. I'm just going to add some bedding into all of these. And then I think this shelter is done. Okay, they're added in and I can see that we've got a quokka about to die of old age. Fern, bless them. Oh no, this is the pregnant one. Oh, it's one of the pregnant ones. They're pregnant. Oh, that's not good. Oh, this is really tragic. Oh no. Bless, we've called the vet. Wow, they really do breed up until death as well. Well, that's a massive loss to the zoo. They will definitely be missed. We're going to have to start a memorial for our Oceania animals. And I'm wondering where the best place to do it is. Potentially on this side of the exhibit building here. I think this may be where we do that. Um, so I'm going to go into memorials. We've got Fern. We can create a memorial. And then oh, I want to make sure I've turned random rotation off because that's going to be difficult. <laughs> and then we can go into zoo memorials Fern and create a memorial for Fern. And we're going to attach it to this uh, section over here. I don't. Uh, maybe we'll start on this side, and we can have them kind of on the slats of this. Now we just need to change the photo to be of Fern. So I'm going to go to this location uh, on my drive and move the photo over so that it's in the right place and then we should be able to refresh and find it there so now if we refresh there we go it's right there and we click okay we can see a little fern bless her we'll do that for all of our animals and kind of build up a memorial over here um we can probably make these areas more stand out like this could even be a good spot for them actually uh but and, and here I'll, I'll have a think about where we put them because we've also got animals over here that we might want to do memorials for. Um, or we could have a centralized location. I just like having the memorials next to where they lived because it means you can go, you can see the animals and then you can see some of the favorite, you know, previous animals that were at the zoo that maybe you knew as well um, that have passed away. And you can go and kind of visit them again rather than just having one dedicated memorial section. Uh, but let me know in the comments what you guys think too. If you think you'd rather have one big memorial rather than them uh, smattered around everywhere. And we've got welfare protesters. Why is that? Oh, they're not being fed. I think they're just hungry and they're running to food right now. There's... Why, why? Yeah, that's the only thing I can see. Their just nourishment is at 2%. You need to eat. Yeah, okay, okay. Oh, keeper's been called. You need to put food in here. Oh my goodness, look at all this. <laughs> There's so many of them. Okay, our keeper's on the way. They will feed everyone. That shouldn't keep happening, but we do have some staff that need training up. So let's train them up again. We did put some more keepers in last time. Yeah, okay, we really need keepers in here. Okay, I've just put the keeper here. They've got the food in hand. So it should be absolutely fine. They're just going to go around and feed everyone. Oh, and you can see loads of them are bedded down in here. That's so cute. Oh, I love these. I love our little deer habitat as it is now. I think now these guys are settling in with their hard shelter. It's time to learn a little bit about our red deer. The heaviest red deer ever recorded weighed 497 kilos. Definitely a big boy. The male red deer make a loud roar known as a bugle to aid in the cohesion of their harem and to signal to rival males. The red deer's hooves are soft at birth, 
so fawns rarely walk the first 16 days of their lives until they harden. The fawns are also born with spots for camouflage, but they lose their spots by the time they're five months old. And that's something I'm really excited to see in this zoo when we start breeding. The red deer are a widespread species living throughout the temperate grasslands, woodlands and scrublands of Europe, Asia and parts of Northern Africa. The red deer shed and regrow their antlers every year, and while they're growing, they're covered in velvet, which provides blood and nutrients to the growing bones. Thankfully, the red deer are not endangered and are a species of least concern. And I think with that, as the sun is rising on a new day in the zoo, we're going to call it here for this episode and we'll continue this habitat in the next episode. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a like if you have. It really helps the channel out. And I'll see you in the next one.